Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Crimin' Ollie, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, trash. I'm going to give you 10 reasons why reading trashy books is good for you. So let's start by defining trash. Uh, so I've talked about trashy books a lot in the past on the channel, but not that recently. Um, so newer subscribers uh, probably won't know that in August of this year, um, I ran an event called Garb August for the month, uh, which was designed to encourage people to read and talk about trashy books. And in the run up to that, I'd done a lot of videos discussing trash as kind of a, a, a category of book. Um, but it's not something I've talked about that much since Garb August and the channel has grown a lot since then. Um, so I thought it was worth touching on again before the end of the year. Um, so what are trashy books? What do I mean by trash? So I, what I don't mean is that the books are bad. When I use the term trash, I'm not judging the books at all. I'm not saying that they're not good books. I'm not saying that you won't have a great time reading them. Um, I love reading books that I would label as trashy books. Um, what I mean when I say trash is that these are books that the publishers uh, and the uh, the kind of literary world at large consider to be trash. So these are books that the publishers push out purely to make money um, with, with little concern for quality and things like that. Um, often books that are published quickly to cash in on something um, popular at the time. So something that's, you know, happening in popular culture. So think about um, you know, like Killer Animals books that came out in the wake of the success of Jaws, for example. Um, so, yeah, so often books that publishers are um, trying to get out as quickly as possible to cash in on something. And also books that tend to be um, looked down upon by, you know, critics, which you certainly wouldn't see um, nominated for literary prizes and things like that. Um, so books that society as a whole um, considers to be trash, but which we as readers can get real value from. And I can think of, you know, countless books that people would uh, turn their noses up at that I've loved, that I've had a really good time with, that have provided me with, you know, a, a rich source of entertainment. Um, so yeah, so when I say trash, I'm not judging the books at all, um, but I do find it quite a useful kind of shorthand um, to describe this kind of book. And I suppose to use a um, an analogy with another form of media, Trash books for me are kind of like B-movies. So I think people have, are quite familiar with the term B-movies and understand what a B-movie is. So a you know a movie that's made by a studio quickly and cheaply, um, often to cash in on the success of a more popular movie. So, um, you know, for example, um, speaking about the horror genre, after, so following the success of the American film Dawn of the Dead, there were tons of like low-budget Italian zombie movies. Um, and indeed, the film, uh, the Lucio Filci film Zombie, or Zombie Flesh Eaters as it was known in the UK, um, was originally released as Zombie 2, um, with Dawn, because Dawn of the Dead was released as Zombie in Europe. Um, so, yeah, so, you know, a similar idea. So, um, you know, companies trying to cash in on the success of something else to, to make a quick buck. And I would consider trashy books to be a, a subset of popular fiction. Um, so, you know, popular fiction covers all sorts of genres, as, as do trashy books, um, but there's a difference. So an author like Stephen King, I would consider to be an author of popular fiction, but not an author of trashy books. Whereas someone like Guy and Smith, who we'll talk about uh, a little later, is definitely an author of trashy books. So books that are, you know, designed to, to cash in. Um, so anyway, I've got 10 things for you today, 10 reasons why I think trashy books are good for you. And by good for you, I mean good for your reading life. I think they are books that can, um, you know, if you don't read trashy books already, I think introducing a little bit of trash into your diet um, will help you overall as a reader. Um, so let me go through those 10 reasons uh, with you and you can let me know in the comments what you think of them. So the first one is, I think trashy books are great palate cleansers. Um, so, you know, I read quite a mixed diet of books, um, as anyone who watches the channel will know, but I always, every month, will read something trashy. So, you know, one of the ongoing series that I've been reading is the Execution series, um, 
by so created by Don Pendleton. So there are, I think, over 400 books in the Executioner series in total. Um, it's been running since the since the 60s and is. Uh, I, I think they've stopped publishing them now. But there, you know, there are hundreds of these books. They're very formulaic, you know, exactly what you get going into them. They're very silly. Um, you know, they involve uh, the hero, Mac Bolan, um, in the earlier books going up against the Mafia and then later books going up against terrorists and things like that. Um, but you know exactly what you're going to get with them. And they are a reliable, fun, quick read. So, um, you know, I try and read good books as well. So, you know, I'm, I'm reading um, a series of classics at the moment. Um but I can't, I can't exist on classics alone. Um, I need this kind of quick, easy read to slot in between more challenging or more disturbing or more, you know, longer, more in-depth books. Um, you know, you quite often see when people are um, doing a, a, a read of a classic book, like particularly like a long book like War and Peace or something like that, people will say, oh, I'll aim to read like 30 or 50 pages a day. Yeah, you can't just read, um, or people seem to struggle, I'm sure some people can, but people seem to struggle to just read a book like War and Peace and not read anything else at the same time. And I've, I've certainly found that true myself at the moment when I'm trying to read some Dostoevsky. It's just too much. It's, it's too rich to read, all in, uh, to, to read all in one go. I need some other things interspersed with it as well. It's like when you go, if, if you go on holiday for two weeks and like stay in a resort or, you know, in a hotel or something like that, and you're eating, you know, like rich, expensive food every day. Um, I don't know about you. When I get home, all I want is beans on toast or something like that. I want something really plain and simple. Um, and for me, reading is similar. You need that kind of variety in your reading life. Um, number two, then, um, they remind you of the simple pleasure of reading. So I don't know about you, but I started reading um, because I was made to. Yeah, you, you know, we are we are taught to read at school. It's considered to be a very important thing. We're encouraged to read. But I started loving reading because I found books that were fun and that I really enjoyed. Um, you know, for me, um, some of the earliest books I remember, you know, just devouring and, and falling in love with were um, novelisations of the, the TV show Doctor Who. And, and novelisations definitely fall into the, the category of trash. You know, they are books that are published to cash in on the success of a TV show or a movie or whatever. Um, so I think reading trashy books, reading books that are easy and entertaining, reminds us of why we fell in love with reading in the first place. You know, nobody starts off reading Dostoevsky or Tolstoy. People start off reading you know, small, entertaining books that appeal to something they, you know, often that have a crossover appeal with something they like already. Um, number three, then, um, I think trashy books are easy to DNF. So I've said here that I get a lot of pleasure from trashy books, but clearly there are a lot of trashy books which I don't I don't get pleasure from. Um, and that will be the same for everyone. You know, you, you will find books that are trash that you enjoy, but equally, um, you'll find books that are, you know, that just don't click with you for whatever reason. And often, you know, trashy books are written quickly, so they may not have the refinement of a, you know, a, a, a more classic work of fiction, so we say. Um, so it's easy, the, and the reason I think it's easy to DNF a trashy book, more so than it's easy to DNF as a, a classic, is there's no judgment involved. So, you know, if I'm reading a, a classic book like, uh, the Brothers uh, Kar Karamazov, which I'm trying to read at the moment, I feel, if I DNF that book, I will feel like I'm letting myself down a bit. I feel a bit guilty about it. I, I will worry that people will judge me for not having managed to get through that book. You know, no one, no one's going to judge you for DNFing Night of the Crabs. You know, no one's going to say, oh, you really should have persevered with it. It's a fantastic book. It will change your life. It won't change your life. It's a fun read, but it won't change your life. So I think trashy books are easy to DNF. And I think that's important because I think it's important that we all train ourselves to be better at DNFing. Um, we are too bad at doing that. There's, you know, there are far too many great books out there, and I include trashy books in, in great books, far too many great books out there to read books that you're not enjoying. And I think we should all try and get better at DNFing books, at putting aside books that just aren't working for us. Um, moving on then, number four. So I think trashy books do a great job of capturing the current zeitgeist. So capturing the mood in society at a time. Um, so if I think about this book here, 
So this is a book I would I would consider to be a trashy book. And it's actually a book that was set in the 80s, but was published now. And I think this taps into, whilst it's got definitely a retro feel, I think it taps into a lot of um, current modern fears and things like that. So this is a book about uh, snuff movies. Um, and I think we have a, you know, there are a lot of current fears about like the internet and things like that and about the kind of things that are out there on the dark web. And I think this book taps into that. But it also taps into our love of nostalgia at the moment. So, you know, we're going through a period at the moment and I think every era has its nostalgia. We're going through a period at the moment where we're really nostalgic for the 80s. I think of things like Stranger Things. Um, and this book taps into that. So it really taps into that modern zeitgeist by having that fear about destructive, harmful entertainment. Uh, entertainment's probably the wrong word, but you know what I mean. Um, and also our, our love of the 80s. Um, so yeah, so, so they can be, I think, trashy books because they are, by definition, almost, you know, they are designed to cash in on something that's popular at the moment. They can be a good way for you to just tap into what's popular at the moment. Um, and I find them, you know, really useful for that. Next in the list is is one that's kind of the flip side of that, um, which is that they are time capsules. So reading a, a, a trash book that was published recently can help you tap into, the, you know, the current culture, the current mood. Reading a trash book from the past will help you understand the culture of the past. Um, this book, Skinhead by Richard Allen from the 1970s, is a great example of that. So this is a book that's about skinhead culture in the UK in the 70s, um, you know, written in the 70s, written to cash in on public fears about um, skinheads and, uh, you know, public fascination with this kind of this kind of movement of, you know, working class young men acting differently than, than society expected them to. Um, so this is a great representation of the UK at the time. I'm not saying it's a great book um, by any means, but it definitely captures something about the, the spirit of the UK in the 1970s. Okay, so number six then is that trashy books can surprise and delight you. Um, so when you read a classic, you expect it to be good. You expect there to be something there that has allowed it to to stand the test of time and to be, you know, critically lauded again and again over the decades. When you read a trashy book, you don't expect that. You expect it maybe to be a quick, fun read, um, but you don't expect it to be, you know, deep or meaningful or anything like that. But they can be, because whilst the publishers are publishing these books to make a quick buck, the writers aren't necessarily writing for them, them for that reason. So, you know, the authors of these books may be pouring their heart and soul into the books and it may just be that they happen to fit something that the publisher's looking for the time for, for at the time and the publisher therefore publishes them um, but that's you know saying that the books are trashy and that the publishers are trying to make a quick buck is in no way a judgment of the author uh, and the author may have very valid reasons may have something really important to say in their book um, and it may look like trash from the outside because it's been chucked out to cash in on the success of something else but that doesn't mean it's it's a bad book on the inside. So I think trashy books are much more likely to surprise and delight us than classics are. Classics almost set themselves up to fail. I mean, they may be fantastic, but are they going to be as fantastic as everybody says they are? So for me, this is a great example of that. So this is a book called Appalachian Prey, or Appalachian Prey, depending on how you pronounce it, by Debbie Herbert. So a book from the Harlequin uh, Intrigue line, so a, a romantic suspense novel. Um, I thought this would be a fun read. I didn't have huge expectations for it, but it was fantastic. It was really exciting. It's got a really strong central female character. It's got some really interesting kind of family dynamics and things like that in it. And I had an absolutely great time with it. Um, I'm not going to say it changed my life or anything like that, but but it did delight me. I really, really enjoyed this book. Number seven then, and, and this is a good example for that as well, is that, that reading trashy books is a good way to try reading things outside your comfort zone. Um, so we talk a lot on booktube about trying to read more widely and things like that um, and reading more widely by reading you know 800 page classics um, is not necessarily always an easy thing to do whereas this kind of uh, you know relatively slim uh, popular fiction volume which is easy to read is a great way to just try different genres out and that is indeed you know what I did with this one I was interested to read more romance fiction um, and I gave this a try and as I say I really enjoyed it so you know it might be that you want you want to try more horror fiction more sci-fi whatever there will be a trashy book in that genre 
that you will enjoy that will allow you to sample some of the tropes and themes of the genre um, in a quick and easy way. Next up, trashy books can be comfortingly predictable. So, so trash books are often written to a formula, particularly so something like this. So this is a, another Harlequin romance from the NASCAR series of books. So a series of books set around the world of, of uh, motor racing in the States um, with you know, different, a different romantic uh, plot in each one. And you get a range of different characters in these books. So, you know, drivers, publicists, mechanics, things like that. Um, but always a romance or, and always against the backdrop of NASCAR. And there's clearly a, a, like a checklist of things that the writers of these books have to have to check off as they go through, you know, plotting and coming up with the characters and things like that, which makes the books predictable, but in a way that's that's really nice. <laughs> you know, there's something great about feeling like you you know what's going to happen in the book, that you are part of you're part of a gang in a way with the, with the author um it's like if you're watching a long running tv show and you think particularly of sitcoms and things like that in sitcoms you you can predict how a particular character will react in a, in a certain situation usually and and what their punchline will revolve around so you know uh, sitcoms often have a character like a bitchy character and a stupid character and things like that so thinking about you know friends so you can predict how joey joey will react to a certain situation in friends and there's something really comforting about that because you feel like you're part of a gang you feel like you're you're on the same team as the writers um, and that's definitely true for trashy fiction as well okay next up the penultimate reason um, is that trashy books have the best covers so trash books because there are so many of them and because the you know the authors aren't necessarily well known and things like that their covers are much more important um, and they really try to to sell the book with the cover um, I think personally that you know that the artwork on books has got more and more bland and boring over the years and we seem to be, you know, in an era at the moment when so many um, kind of books that you see on the shelves of bookstores just have very samey covers, which are completely dull. Um, whereas trashy books often have wonderful covers. Um, so a couple that I've already shown in this video, but they are great. So Night of the Crabs with this giant killer crab on the cover and fantastic font work as well. You just don't see um, typography as good as this anymore on, on book covers, do you? Um, and also Appalachian Prey, which features a, a pregnant woman with a shotgun, which I think is just a really striking and immediately intriguing cover um, that, you know, as soon as I saw this cover, um, I wanted to read the book. And then the final reason, the one that ties all the other reasons together, is that trashy books are just fun. They're written to be entertaining. They're written to be diverting. They're written to be escapism. They're not written to make you think deeply about things. And sometimes that's what we need from books. We just need entertainment. And that's what trashy books are. They are pure entertainment. Um, and I love them for that. Um, I could not, I, I cannot imagine reading without reading at least a few trashy books a month. Um, they give me such huge amounts of pleasure. Um, and uh, I, I think that everyone out there should try them um, because without them, um, I think your reading life is, is somewhat incomplete. Time for a random book from the shelves and it had to be trash today. So I've got Casca, God of Death by Barry Sadler for you, um, which is from a, a men's adventure series, which I haven't ever read. Um, so I was very aware of these books uh, as a kid growing up. I remember seeing them on the, on the shelves of bookstores, um, but never actually read any, any of them. Um, so it's about that the series is about a Roman soldier who's immortal, um, who comes back in various um, ages throughout history um, and gets involved in uh, gets involved in battles and things like that. So in this one, um, he is uh, with the uh, the Teotic nation um, and comes face to face with uh, with the god Quetzalcoatl. Um, so it sounds like a lot of fun. On the cover, you probably can't see the cover, but you've got like a World War II soldier. You've got some Vikings. Uh, you've got like a, a Mayan pyramid or something like that. So there's all sorts of good stuff going on in this book and it looks like a lot of fun. So I hope you found that interesting. Let me know if you enjoy trashy books. Let me know what you get out of them. Let me know what you think about my, my top 10 reasons for, for why they're fantastic. Um, and as always, thank you very much for watching. I hope you're safe and well out there. I hope you're reading good stuff and I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.